This is an intro. Don't need to intro. I don't need intro. This is just a fake show. It's just a fake show. Fake show. Fake show. This is an intro. Don't need to intro. I don't need intro. This is just a fake show. It's just a fake show. Fake show. Fake show. YouTube, what is up? I'm your homeboy, homeboy Josh, back at you with a look at the Eagle sub -ohm tank from Geek Vape. But before we get into this new offering from Geek Vape, definitely need to take the time to remind you that we all have a part to play in the fight against big pharma, big tobacco, the FDA, and the deeming regulations that are looming over our heads. That means if you're on social media, remember to paint the best possible image of the vape community that you can. If you're a shop or a shop owner, definitely do take the time to remind your customers that they have a part to play in this fight if they want to keep vaping. And remember to support all of Casas' calls to action, including that to support HR 2058 and the Cole Bishop Amendment. We all have a part to play. Now, when I heard the Eagle was coming my way, I got pretty excited because from what I could tell, it was modeled after the Griffin RTA, which is one of the best RTAs that I've used to date. The Eagle sub -ohm tank is packaged up just like many another offering from Geek Vape in this sort of jewel case with these black and orange colors where you can see the device in a little window and when you open up the little flap, you've got your extras and your tools and your accessories and all the good stuff alongside of it. The tank itself breaks down so you have your drip tip, your top cap slash top airflow section, your tank which breaks down further, you can actually break down the tank entirely for easy cleaning, and your base. It's 2016, it's the year of the RTA, basically the third gen RTAs, and they're just awesome. And it's one after another after another. And now, I'm starting to see sub -ohm tanks that are taking it to the next level. sub -ohm tanks that have builds in them already installed that are likened to builds that you'd put in an RTA, that an experienced builder would put in an RTA. And I think that's really interesting. The Tornado Nano with its twisted chip coils. I mean, that was a great, great sub -ohm tank. And the Eagle comes with a bunch of these HBCs, as Geek Vape likes to call them, hand-built coils. When you buy the tank itself, you're gonna get two of these hand-built coils, and they're gonna be inside the little flap when you open it on up. There is not one pre-installed, but it does come with two of them. And as it turns out, there's a bunch of other HBC hand-built coils that you can buy separately. And they come in packages of two in these clear tubes with these orange tops and bottoms, which are always falling off, by the way. They're always coming apart. And in between each of the coils, there's gonna be a little piece of cotton to separate them. Now the thing about these hand belt coils is that there's a lot of them. I mean a lot of them. I mean so many that you can vape probably for a straight year without trying all of them. Because these coils, you can use them over and over and over again. Just one of these hand belt coils, if you re-wick them and take care of them, can last you almost an entire month. It's variety, variety, variety is the name of the game. You've got fused Clapton coils, you've got notch coils, you've got staple coils. Staple coils being, you know, a piece of square ribbon wire, single strand of square ribbon wire that's sort of clapped and over. You've got snake coils, and you've got twisted coils, and you've got just regular old straight wire coils. All of them spaced and all of them pre-wicked. Some of them are even pre-fired. So they've actually taken the time to work out the hot spots for you, which is important with a lot of exotic builds. And it's a ridiculous amount of coil heads that you can buy for the Eagle sub -ohm tank. There's just so many different options. Top that off, it's modeled exactly after the Griffin. The Griffin RTA, oh, I'm sorry, I mean the Eagle sub -ohm tank, has a lot going for it. It's a 25 millimeter sub -ohm tank, and it's got a six and a half milliliter juice capacity. And it's got basically the same sort of awesome font and the same cool kind of design as the Griffin RTA did. I love the fonts that they use on their products, especially with the Griffin. 
The Griffin and the Eagle Sebohm tank, they have this sort of font where it says Eagle. It just reminds me of Gibson guitars and Gretsch guitars for some reason, and I just love the look of it. It's just so reminiscent of that. It's such an iconic looking font. And as you move around this tank on the opposite side of where it says Eagle, you've got a sort of emblem of an Eagle there, whereas the Griffin had a representation of a Griffin. So it's got a lot in common with the Griffin RTA. It's got the same ginormous fill port. It's got the same really nice sort of conical shape to the inside of the bell. And it's got the same sort of wicking ports as well. The drip tip is a nice, wide, fat Delrin drip tip with a huge unstepped bore. It's secured with two O-rings and it never gets hot. One of my favorite features of the Griffin RTA had to be the top airflow system. It comes in separately and travels down its own independent chimney on down to the coil. I love that design. I've loved it ever since I saw the Heracles Plus, and I loved when I saw that Geek Vape had implemented that in the Griffin, and I was thrilled when I saw that they implemented it into the Eagle sub-ohm tank as well. On the bottom of the sub-ohm tank, the base is sort of lithograph -ute. I like that little signature kind of element to it. It feels very personal, I dig that, and it's serialized as well. I have number A97. The base houses a brass positive pin, and it also houses the airflow control, which has about four airflow options that actually provide airflow, and they all kind of click into place. So you can close it down completely all the way so that you only have the top airflow, and also to prevent any leaking when it's not used. That was basically the big highlight of the Griffin RTA for me, that it had that top airflow design that I fell in love with when I checked out, you know, the, uh, the Heracles uh, Plus or whatever it was. That's sub ohm tank and when airflow like that meets in the middle it creates this turbulence that really just accentuates the flavor if you ask me so i have to say that i was pretty disappointed with the eagle now, come again there are just a few shortcomings with the eagle that do not put it on par with the griffin the main thing for me is well there's two big glaring issues the top airflow control. See, the thing about the Griffin was that the top airflow control moved very swiftly and very easily from all the way open to all the way closed. It was very, very easy to adjust, which is important because it's a really small, grippy place at the top where you can actually grab hold and turn it. The mistake they made with the Eagle sub -ohm tank is it's still the same size. It's still the same grippy area, which is a very small area. And it's still kind of sharp at the top, but they made it so it locks into place at several different airflow options like they did with the bottom airflow. Now the problem with that is such a small place to grip and with a sharp top ledge like this, it's very uncomfortable and often very difficult to actually turn that airflow control. When I was using it, it was find a place that worked for me, eh, usually about halfway open and leave it there. But there are times, especially with a tank like this that has these really cool airflow options that I really want to play with and change and tweak. And I can't with this because the top airflow is just really not easy to adjust at all. So you can't really adjust the top airflow very easily. And when you do, sometimes it can be rather painful. Like I feel like I'm going to cut my fingers trying to do this sometimes. Sometimes you end up opening up the juice intake. It's very frustrating to try and adjust the top airflow sometimes. It was done much better on the Griffin. It just opened and closed very swiftly, very easily so it's a big old fail for the top airflow on the Eagle. The second and perhaps more significant problem with the Eagle sub -ohm tank is the hand-built coils. Dude, are you kidding me? How can you hate on the HBC coils? They're like the best part. That's like the coolest part of this tank. You can use them over and over again. You can change the wicks. You can actually rebuild it completely. They're awesome. Put it to you this way. I've got this at 50 watts. And this is a single coil that ohms out at 0.15 ohms. Wait, 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 wait. You're vaping a 0.15 ohm coil at 50 watts? Dude, if I built a 0.15 ohm coil, I'd be vaping it at like 90 watts. It's nice vapor production at first. It's good flavor, about on par with the Griffin. It's very satisfying vape, fills your lungs. And then it starts to get very dry. Very, very dry, very, very quickly. 
it starts to feel kind of burnt because they're overwicked is the thing. That's your problem? That they're overwicked? Who gives a fuck? Who cares? You can re-wick these as many times as you want. It's so easy to re-wick them. You're basically complaining because you have to re-wick these coils that are made to be re-wicked. I mean, I get it. You know, they came wicked. You should be able to use them that way, but so big deal if they're not perfect the way they are. Just re-wick them to your liking. Here, what are you complaining about? I'll show you how to do it. It's easy. And some of them just hadn't been dry fired enough or hadn't been tested enough. The first coil I tried in there was dual fuse Clapton. And this dual fuse Clapton would not fire. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of a letdown. A single fuse Clapton HBC is what I ended up putting in here because the first one I tried wouldn't work. But I mean, when you get down to it, dude, you could have just tweaked the coil. Take out the wicks, screw it down on something, and start tweaking, reseat the coil, and before you know it, you're back up and running and the coil's firing. I really don't know what you're bitching about, dude. This thing's pretty fucking awesome. I think you need to grow up. Seriously. You're making us look bad here. It's not the end of the world, though, because these coils, you can re-wick them. And not only that, with these decks that it comes with, they're actually pretty awesome because they're completely rebuildable. You can use an Allen key and you can take out the coil and you can rebuild this completely. When you get an HBC coil, you're not just getting, you know, a throwaway coil. You're getting a coil that A, you can re-wick, and B, this works as an RTA head too. So you can completely rebuild this deck as an RTA. So it's not all bad. So I think what you're getting at here, you gigantic bastard, is that if they change the top cap a little bit so that it moves a bit more fluid and they tweak these HBC coils a little bit so that they you know, work out any quality control and wicking issues they have, they'd really have something here. They really have something here. It would be great. Uh, until then, it's just okay. It's almost there, but not quite. Anyway. Till next time, I'm your homeboy, homeboy Josh, Vape on Vapors.